Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing sleep. If you guys don't already know, on our YouTube channel, you can find a playlist for psychiatry for step one videos. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Show us some love. Now, with that being said, we're going to talk about sleep in this video. So sleep is very, very important. You know you need it for normal day-to-day -day function. And a lack of sleep can lead to so many different things like exhaustion, depression, and anxiety are linked to it, as well as physiological things that can happen like cardiac problems and metabolic problems. I'm sure you guys already know what happens when you have lack of sleep, so I don't need to talk about that. Now, there are four main phases of sleep that you need to know. We're going to talk more about it. But just so you know, there's these four, N1, N2, N3, and REM sleep. Okay, that's the fourth phase. And then there are four sleep disorders you need to know for step one. Narcolepsy, sleep paralysis, sleep terror, and in your recess. So in this video, we're going to be discussing more about the four phases of sleep and each of these sleep disorders and what you need to know for step one. So we're going to start talking about phases of sleep. Now, phase the phases of sleep are very simple. First, you have N1. This is your lightest sleep. In it, you're going to have theta waves on an EEG, and this is what a theta wave looks like. No, look how uh, the amplitude kind of varies, but uh, overall, uh, it's very close together. The waves are as normal as you could think, right? Uh, this is going to be the smallest percentage of sleep. So let's just write this here, sm percentage of sleep. Okay, so the first thing you're going to have is N1. Okay, this is going to be the smallest percentage. We're going to keep adding to this right here as we go along. And then after N1, you're going to have N2, which is medium sleep. In N2, you're going to have theta complexes on the EEG, which look like this right here. And the theta complexes have two main key features or characteristics. The first one is K complex, which is this characteristic increase, uh, decrease, and back increase, kind of like a QRX complex, right? It looks very similar. And you have these sleep spindles right here. That should give you an uh, indication of N2. N2 is also where you're going to end up grinding your teeth, a.k.a. bruxism, okay? So let's write that down. Teeth grinding. Boom! All right. So, uh, and finally, this is the largest percentage of sleep. So after N1, you're going to have N2 uh, as your largest percentage of of sleep right here okay that's the most important one now after n2 you're going to go into n3 sleep this is your deepest sleep with delta waves on the eeg i like to think about delta waves as very deep waves okay and that's what it looks like look the waves are not very consistent it looks like it's been spread out so like if this is your normal sine wave if you just spread it out like that that's kind of what a delta wave reminds me of now, you also are going to have sleepwalking and inuresis or bedwetting occurring here. So let's that, write that down for you guys, bedwetting. Uh, that's what inuresis is. We're going to talk more about that in a second. But that happens in N3. And these are your three phases of non-REM sleep, okay? So we're going to write this here too, N-REM. All right, so right here we have, uh, let's go up. Boom. All right, so we have N3 right here. So the, the most time spent while you're asleep is in N2 sleep, okay? The least time in N1, N3 is in middle. Now, after N3, you have something called REM sleep. This is where your dreams and nightmares reside, okay? This is where all your dreams are. Uh, this stands for rapid eye movements. In rapid eye movements or REM sleep, you're going to have a characteristic sawtooth pattern on the EEG. This is what the sawtooth pattern looks like. It's very different than all the rest of the patterns. You can see it's kind of like a sawtooth pattern. Uh, and this is also going to be associated with penile tumescence, which is just having an erection while someone is asleep. It happens in REM sleep. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the phases of sleep. Next, we're going to talk about the sleep cycle. This is very simple. The sleep cycle is going to cycle from NREM to REM sleep and back to non-REM sleep. So you're going to go from N1, N2, N3, and REM, and then eventually you're going to go back to N1, and then you're going to go to N2, then N3, then REM, over and over again. It's not like you just stop in REM afterwards. Now, one uh, characteristic thing to understand is that it lasts for 90 minutes, a whole cycle. And the other characteristic thing to know is that the length of REM sleep is going to increase with each cycle which means that the length of NREM sleep is gonna decrease with each cycle, okay? You're gonna go more and more into REM the longer uh, you go through these sleep cycles. And this can all be measured through something called a hypnogram. Hyp 
hypnogram is usually used uh, in sleep studies. So that's all you need to know for the phases of sleep. It answers the majority of the questions you're going to be seeing. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is one of the main um, disorders you're going to see on step one. It is characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness, despite being awake and completely well rested, you could have uh, rested eight hours last night, but you still feel exhausted and you uh, have all of a sudden, you know, sleep, uh, sleepiness occurring in your head or whatever. You get my point. You get sleepy really quickly. And uh, it's characterized by recurrent episodes of rapid onset, overwhelming sleepiness for at least three times a week, then it lasts greater than three months. Okay, so three times a week. And three months is very important. Remember, timelines are very important in psych, so you got to know that. Another thing to understand is when it comes to uh, the pathogenesis, this is all due to decreased orexin, aka hypocretin production in the lateral hypothalamus. Okay, uh, and this leads to dysregulated sleep-wake cycle. So all of this is very important. I highly, highly recommend you guys write it down or just commit it to memory. Orexin and the timeline, three times a week for greater than three months. Orexin is produced in a lateral hypothalamus, and uh, that's what's leading to narcolepsy. So all this is associated with several things. Number one, you have hypnagogic hallucinations. Hypnagogic means you have hallucinations right before you go to sleep. That's why we have the go in uh, gogic and uh, going to sleep in a green color to help you guys remember. It's also associated with hypnopompic hallucinations which are uh, hallucinations that occur right before waking up completely. Okay, so you get pumped in the morning, uh, hypnopompic. Uh, it's also associated with sleep paralysis, uh, a.k.a. nocturnal and narcoleptic sleep episodes that start with REM sleep. Instead of starting at NREM, you go to REM sleep. And cataplexia, which is just loss of all muscle tone following a, a strong emotional uh, stimulus, such as laughter, which would be kind of interesting to feel. And I'm not going to lie, I do want to feel cataplexic at some point from laughter, specifically from laughter. So the treatment for narcolepsy when it comes to step one is uh, pretty simple. You're going to have to have good sleep AKA, first of all, that's very important, along with daytime stimulants, so amphetamines. Usually these are used for uh, ADHD, but you can use them for narcolepsy. And you can also add nighttime sodium oxybate uh, as part of the treatment for narcolepsy. And that's pretty much narcolepsy. After narcolepsy, we're going to talk about sleep terror disorder. In this disorder, patients are going to have periods of inconsolable terror with screaming that happens all of a sudden. Now, this is most common in children, and this occurs in N3 stage of NREM, the deep sleep. Okay, what else happens in N3 stage of NREM, if you guys remember? Sleepwalking and in your recess. Okay, this also occurs here. Uh, so we're just going to write all that down. N3, deep sleep, along with sleep walking plus enuresis. All right. So the patients are going to have no memory of the arousal episode. They're going to wake up. They're going to start screaming uh, hysterically, but they won't remember what happened. As opposed to nightmares, which occur in REM sleep, they end up remembering the scary dream. So the triggers for this can be emotional distress, fevers, lack of sleep, and this is usually self-limiting. It goes away over time, and a child will grow out of it. Next, we have, finally, enuresis. Enuresis is when a patient, or usually a child, has urinary incontinence that occurs more than two times a week for three months. All these sleep things occur for a timeline of three months, okay? And uh, it usually occurs in a person greater than five years old. It might happen to, uh, to a kid who's less than five years old. That's just normal because they're still being potty trained to a certain extent. But if it's someone greater than five years old who's having urinary incontinence while they're sleeping, we classify that as enuresis. Now, the treatment for this is very simple. We have behavioral modifications like schedule voids, nighttime fluid restrictions, as well as positive reinforcement. So if you guys remember in our first episode on... Uh, uh, um, uh, classical conditioning, we talked about enuresis alarms, which are used to train someone to wake up when they wet the bed. You can also give oral desmopressin, which is an antidiuretic ADH uh, hormone analog, and this is preferred over uh, imipar uh, imipramine due to fewer side effects. That's very important. 
okay, before we used to give imipramine. Now, remember, N in uresis also occurs in N3 stage of N REM sleep. Don't forget that. All these sleep disorders pretty much occur in N3, uh, with the exception of narcolepsy. In narcolepsy, they're not, uh, it's not happening in N3. It's just happening at any time. All right, so that is pretty much all you need to know for sleep. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this helped. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And if you guys don't know, you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine, and you can find us. You can listen to us on the go. And with that being said, thank you so much. Go ahead and continue on to the next topic.